Okay guys and gals, today's video is on how to easily make your own pompano rigs. It doesn't matter if you're fishing from the surf or from a pier or if you want to make these for fresh water. Um, the hardest part about making any of these rigs, and they're often referred to as dropper loop rigs, is to have to make that dropper loop knot. That can be a little trying if you're trying to do it by hand and we're going to show you an easier way to do it. Now, once you master that and you can make your own rigs, I can tell you from my own experience that there is nothing like catching your own fish on your own rigs and being self-sufficient and never having to buy another rig again. If you do a search on our friend Google on the words dropper loop jigs, you're going to find that there are a lot of different versions of it out there. But most of them are the same. Basically, it's just a board with a bunch of nails driven in on a certain sequence. And then you have to run your monofilament line around. And actually, it's like weaving it with your fingers. And, you know, uh, a lot of people believe that using those jigs are pretty easy. Well, maybe they're easy if you're under the age of 35 or 40 and you've got the manual dexterity of a brain surgeon, but I don't know. They weren't for me uh, until I tried the rig that my dad made, and I made a few improvements on it, and I like to call it the Gen 3. This video is going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a Gen 3. I'm going to show you all the tools you're going to need and all the parts you're going to need and where you can get them. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you is this diagram showing you the size of the lumber you're going to need, the screws, the uh, screw hole locations, and uh, everything you need to do to build this. Now, you can obviously just pause your video when you're building this. And uh, if you need to, just uh, pause the video and take a picture of it with your, uh, your smartphone and use that in the shop. Uh, I also recommend that you, you know, maybe go in on this with a few other people. It's a lot easier to make uh, four or five of these versus just one. That first one's the hardest one. And uh, if you're like me, you're going to make a template. So um, what I do is uh, I use hardwood, but if you're using hand tools, then pine is your best bet. You know, just go to your local Lowe's or Home Depot and get some one by four pine. Uh, that kiln dried is three and a half inches wide. And, you know, that's going to do the trick for you on this jig. You know, I, I use scrap hardwood I have, but you can, uh, you can use the pine. It's going to work just fine. Um, the dowels, uh, usually you can go to any craft store and you can get them cheap enough. Your hardware stores are going to have them as well. Uh, you can see here on this, uh, I made a jig because, you know, I have to make a lot of these things. I sell them on eBay still, but someday I won't be making them and selling them on eBay, and you're going to need to use this video to make your own. Anyways, um, I made that jig by just drilling a series of 1 8 inch holes. Now, some of those will turn into 3 8 inch holes for the dowels, but uh, this jig is going to make repeating the process on all your boards a lot easier. Now in my case I'm working with hardwood and I also want the dowels to be straight up and down so uh, I do use a drill press but there's no reason you can't use a hand drill. I do like using a Forstner bit. It has a lot more control but don't worry about it. If you don't want to spend the money on the Forstner just get yourself a regular drill bit and you'll be fine. Uh, also on the uh, dowels, I have a chop saw, but maybe you don't. And you can use your uh, hacksaw to cut your dowels, and it'll give you a nice clean cut. If you're using a chop saw, don't worry about having a little bit of waste. You know, any closer than this, and you may end up losing a digit. The, um, the dowels, uh, I like to put a little bevel on the end. It's going to do two things for you after you cut them to size. Uh, the bevel is going to allow you to insert it easily into the hole. And the other thing it's going to do is um, give the glue somewhere to go if you put in a little too much. So that's, uh, that's important. That'll make your job easier. You can see I made up a bunch here for my last batch. 
And I also make a jig for the screw holes um, that are going to be on the side. Now these particular screw holes are not very deep. I only make them uh, go a half inch deep because I'm using Craig screws. Uh, this is hardwood and uh, you know they'll, they're self-tapping so you don't have to worry about going any deeper. But by drilling the half inch deep hole, it's going to allow you to put that screw exactly where it needs to be. And that chart I gave you is going to show that. And it's also uh, going to allow it to give it a straight start when you screw it in. This is another jig I made here. I did notice when I started driving in the uh, dowels, which are usually made of a softwood, that I was chipping the end of the dowel and uh, I just couldn't have that. So if you're uh, you know, a little anal about that like I was, just make yourself a little jig. You know, Get yourself a, a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than 3 8 and drill it into a block of wood. And then I glued some um, felt on the bottom. And when I was all done, I made sure the hole was deep enough so the dowel was protruding approximately a half an inch. By doing this and using this jig, um, it makes it a lot easier driving in the dowels. Uh, the other part of this jig, it's probably the hardest part to make, is the copper spinner. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, cutting and sanding on this. It's not that big of a deal if you're only making one or two jigs. Uh, I think it's a big deal for me because I, I make a, a dozen or more jigs at a time. And and this, uh, this copper is a 3 8 inch inside diameter, and that's important. Most of your soft copper is 3 8 inch outside diameter, but you want that inside diameter copper. It's going to make the spinner a little bit wider, and that's going to make it a lot easier to take your mono line and insert it into this spinner. And you'll see that later when I give you that demo on using the Gen 3 at the end of the construction. Don't sweat it if you can't afford that $20 piece of copper. I'm going to show you an alternative to that a lot cheaper later in the video. All right, so we've got our 3 8 inch inside diameter, and that equates to a half inch outside diameter copper. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of 3 8 inch dowel and jam it, oh, I don't know, at least a, a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, to the uh, inside of a piece of copper that's at least uh, two and a half inches, two and three quarter inches long. You know, I'm assuming you're only going to make one or two jigs. I'll show you how to make more of these uh, a little more efficiently. But this dowel jammed in there, and by the way, you might have to sand the uh, outside of that dowel a little bit to get it inside the copper. The reason we need that is, is we're going to clamp it in a vise and uh, that vice is going to help us keep it stable while we're putting a hacksaw blade down through it. So jam that dowel in there, and once that's in there, put it in your vice. Uh, keep in mind you're going to need to use a uh, fine tooth hacksaw blade, 32 teeth per inch, and uh, get that in your vice, and then carefully uh, cut down the middle of that copper at least two inches, because our finished spinner is going to be an inch and seven eighth to two. So, you know, make sure it's at least two inches down the cut. And once you've got that, you can go ahead and make sure you cut it off at the, oh, I don't know, two, two and a sixteenth inch mark. That's going to give you a little wiggle room when you do your sanding. And uh, you can see by this picture, uh, all the burrs on here, even with a fine tooth hacksaw blade, you know, you got your work cut out for you, but that's okay. It'll be worth in the long haul. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple tricks on getting rid of some of these burrs without sanding. Uh, uh, this is the other way that I uh, that I cut tubing. Now, uh, I'll cut a, uh, a piece of hardwood, and I will drill a, a hole in it that's a little heavier than half inch. You know, um, I might just use a half inch drill bit and then uh, a regular drill bit, not a Forstner, and then ream it out a little bit. So it's a, a hair wider than a half inch and two and a half inches deep. And uh, I put that in the vise. And once I do that, I, I drop my copper tubing in there. I make sure that the piece of copper tubing is the length that I want. And then I can use a a hacksaw and cut down the middle of that block. Now, 
if um, if you t have a bandsaw and you're lucky enough to have that, you can pre-cut that slot perfectly down the middle of that hole, and that's going to be your guide for the hacksaw blade. And uh, once you cut down through your copper, just peel it out of there with a. In this case, I've got a couple of uh, you know hemostats or bend cases, whatever you want to call them. And uh, in my case, I have to make a lot of these. You don't have to go through all this trouble. You can just use your hacksaw like I showed you. But I thought I would throw that in there in case you decide to make a dozen of these things. Um, the next step you're going to have to do is you're going to save yourself a little bit of filing and sanding by uh, taking the leading edge of the spinner and just nipping off a little bit. You can see by these... Uh, units that are above in the picture, um, how much you're really nipping off. And that's just going to save you um, a lot of grinding, filing, sanding. Now, once you get that done, uh, you can see I've, how big these pieces are that fall off uh, in this picture that I've got here. And uh, But you still got a ton of burrs. You know, you, we've got to get rid of the burrs. If we leave burrs in these spinners, it's going to nick your mono and... Uh, that is going to lead to bad things. You'll probably lose that four pound pompano if you have a nick on these spinners. So let's uh, show you how to get rid of those. Uh, the first thing I like to do is get rid of those burrs on the inside. Now in my case, um, I just took a, uh, a half inch uh, ratchet. You can also use uh, a half inch socket extension that you can see in the, in the photo that's at the top of this one and just set your spinner on there and start tapping you know your uh, your ball peen hammer on the sides you know it's gonna it's gonna take you like 25 30 taps on both sides and you'll find that does a pretty darn good job of getting rid of those burrs but you still got a lot more sanding to do but that it just helps that inside burr is a little tough to get to then what I like to do is clamp a, a file to my workbench and start running that back and forth and you know just in case uh, there are still burrs left after using that ball peen hammer and uh, you're also going to have to set up a, a dowel with uh, some sandpaper on here um, you know usually on the sandpaper don't use too heavy of a grit you know I'll go with like a, a hundred grit sandpaper 120 and uh, just keep working that back and forth and basically you're just going to keep sanding so you have absolutely no <laughs> you can see here I spelled absolutely wrong but that's okay um, no burrs at all and no nicks and that's outside inside leading edges and uh, by doing that you're going to have some smooth operation uh, here's a measured length on this thing is going to be no longer than two, no less than one and seven eighths. And uh, that's important because if you make this thing too long, you won't have enough room to spin it. And uh, if you make it too short, it's just going to be awkward to use. So if you're between one and seven eighths and two inches, you're going to be fine. And I wanted to show you a couple of pictures of the different profiles, what they look like when you get done. Uh, filing, sanding, etc. You know, if you have uh, a power belt sander, you know, this might help you too, but everything can be done by hand. There's a side view there. You can see we've got a real nice taper there for that to slide into the line, and that'll make more sense once you see the demo. And uh, that's the back side there on the right, and that has to be rounded too. You don't want anything being a sharp 90 degree where it's going to cut or nick any line. Um, you know, you got your spinner pretty much all done now. So now what we have to do is we have to take our lumber that we've, uh, we've already drilled our holes out, our, uh, our holes for the, um, for the dowels. You know, there's going to be, uh, at least four of those in it. And then there's going to be a small one eighth inch hole, which is going to be a starter for your, your screw that's going to hold your spinner so you don't lose it. But these two holes here I wanted to show you are going to help you when you use your jigsaw. I, I used a 1164 inch uh, bit on this. And uh, what they're going to do for you is, is when you take your jigsaw and cut through this, it's going to make for cleaner, stronger corners. So uh, let's move on. 
And um, what you also have to do is take and get a, a bit that's uh, probably somewhere around three eighths or a hair larger. And this is going to be your starter hole for your jigsaw blade. And uh, drill that somewhere where the scrap is going to be on the inside of that cutout. Once you get that done, uh, you're going to be ready to jigsaw here. And what you're going to have to do to make this thing stable so it doesn't go flying off your table is, you know, take one of these Irwin quick grip clamps or a C-clamp, whatever you have, and clamp it to a workbench or something so it's good and strong. And uh, that way you'll be able to jigsaw this thing. Uh, you're going to need a real fast cut wood, uh, wood jigsaw blade. Uh, you don't want a real fine tooth, especially if you're using hardwood. And uh, drop it down in in that starter hole and um, cut all the way to your first corner. And don't worry if you're missing that line in this first cut. You're, you're just going to have to uh, miss it a little bit. You'll be able to clear that up uh, when you uh, get your other cut in. You'll see that here in a second. And, uh, yeah, and all I did was is if there's anything left you know, inside the line, just uh, carefully guide it along the line. And, and there you go. There's your, there's your cutout. If you're lucky enough to have a, a bandsaw, well, you can use that for two of the cuts, but you're still going to need that jigsaw for the inside uh, cut that connect those two. So, but don't worry about it. If you don't have the bandsaw, your jigsaw is going to be fine. Now I have a power belt sander, but when I'm all done, Drilling all my holes, uh, you know, cutting out the uh, the cutout. What you want to do is make sure that you just sand every surface uh, outside, inside. You know, you don't want any slivers or anything like that if you're teaching someone younger how to use this and uh, you don't need one yourself. But uh, get that sanding done. Make sure you, you hit every part of that uh, cutout and put a little bevel on all that. You're going to need these clips. These clips are going to hold your your mono, and uh, you know you can get these at Walmart, six bucks. So give you a 12 pack here. They're going to make things easier for you. You will have to drill out the hole. Now I think I used a 3 16th inch drill bit. Uh, th these holes that are in these clips aren't big enough to take those Craig screws. Uh, you're going to have to just either use a hand drill or a drill press. Be careful. As you can see here, I'm using a drill press and just setting it on the edge of a board. Go ahead and do that. Let's uh, show you what they look like when they're mounted. And it's important, too, that uh, when you get all your, uh, your holes drilled in your uh, mini clamps, uh, make sure that when you're all done and you're hand tightening, uh, that you take the top edge of this mini clamp because it's going to be mounted in the middle of the board and just make sure that that top edge is even with the top of the board. That's going to make tying the rigs a lot easier and remember that trick when you're all done constructing this. Uh, we talked about Craig screws. Uh, those are the easiest screws to use. They're, um, they're a nice screw because they're self-tapping. Now, if you're using hardwoods, you're going to have to use this hardwood version, which is just a, it's a fine screw. You can see the XO screw on the bottom of the package here. But if you're using softwood, you're going to want to go ahead and use the, uh, the more coarse screw. And they're the same price. They're a $6.98 Amazon or Lowe's. And uh, make sure, you know, if you're using an impact driver, especially with hardwoods, you know, bring that screw all the way down, but don't let it quite bottom out. You know, those last few turns, do that with a, uh, you know, a hex head screwdriver by hand. Otherwise, you may risk stripping out that hole and then you'll say bad words. You can see here, I, I, I measured up these spinners that I've got. And uh, this is a good indication here, too. Uh, the, the bottom spinner is the uh, the old ones I used to make, um, and they are a, a copper that's a 3 8 inch outside diameter, and you can see how much wider that top one is. And the length on them, like I said, 2 inches, inch and 7 8 These look like they're an inch and 7 8 right on the money. And let's move on here. And now we want to talk about gluing. All right, our dowels are cut, and we beveled the edges of each dowel with a 
power sander or Dremel, uh, drum sander, whatever you got. And uh, we're ready to start gluing these up. You know, I like to use a just like a flux solder brush. You know, you can get them at Harbor Freight. Uh, they're cheap enough. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. You know, you can always use a Q-tip. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get our Type on 3 glue. I like that glue. And we're going to start gluing up these holes. Get paper towels ready with a little bit of water. We want to clean up our mess and, you know, dabble some glue in there each hole. And uh, then take a wet rag and clean it off so you don't end up with a glue mess if you're trying to be neat with this project. And uh, once you get that done, you know, use that little jig we made for... Uh, putting the dowels in and not messing up the end when we tap them in. Uh, once we get all of our dowels in there, uh, you just want to make sure that they're fully seated. You know, do a reality check on each one. Maybe have a, a piece of wood that's, uh, you know, an inch long or a seven-eighths of an inch long. And once you're done tapping it in, just hold it up against each uh each dowel. That way you'll know for sure that it's in there right before the glue sets and it's a lot harder to remove. Uh, we want to buy some of these Eagle Claw barrel swivels with a safety snap. We're going to take these barrel swivels with the safety snaps and we're going to screw them into the Gen 3 jig. And then when we're not using the Gen 3, we'll take our copper spinner, which took us so long to make, and connect it uh, with the hole we drilled in it and that way we never uh, worry about losing that. Uh, as far as the screws go, just get yourself like a number six screw that's three quarters of an inch long and that'll be small enough to fit through the loops on that barrel swivel. And you know the other advice I want to give you is, is you know, maybe you want to do this right and you want to use the copper. It's going to cost you a little bit for the, you know, the barrel swivels, etc., and the dowels. And, you know, it's a lot cheaper to get your friends involved and everybody co-op the thing and make this thing affordable. You know, it's, uh, it's a good investment. And once you see how easy it is to use, You'll you'll know that this is the, this is the the board that you want for uh, making those dropper loops. So, and I want to give you a big tip here. Let's say you can't co-op and you can't buy the copper, and you thought, you know, what what do I do? What am I going to use for a spinner? Well, I thought long and hard about it, and it turns out the answer was right underneath my nose. I had a couple clips where the uh, the uh, rubber had come off one end and I, I was going to throw them away and then I started looking at it and I thought, you know, I'll bet you I could turn this thing into a, a spinner instead of making someone buy the copper. So what I did was uh, I, I drilled out the, uh, the rivet that's in that mini clamp. You know, one side of the rivet's going to be a little bit hollow so your drill bit will go right into it. And I, I popped it apart, you know, used a nail or a prick punch to get that rivet out of there once I uh, drilled off one end of it. And uh, then I took my side cutters and I tried to line them up so they were really even with that little ramp that goes across. And uh, even if I left a little bit of material, I, I know I could sand it or file it off. And I removed both ears. After I moved both ears, then I wanted to take a little bit of the front off uh, for uh, making sure that it's going to slip into the mono easy when we use the jig. And once we do that, we have to also make sure that we, uh, we sand this thing really well on the top too. Those, those little ramps, that's the first thing the, the mono is going to hit are those little ramps after it gets through the nose. And the other consideration is length. You know, we want to make sure this thing is one and seven eighths uh, or two inch maximum. And there you have it. And I, I tried it. And I'll tell you, it, it worked really well. It really did. So uh, there's another uh, alternative for you for saving some money and, and getting that Gen 3 built. Here's a, a comparison of what you get. And you can see that you know, these things are pretty close, the copper and uh, the mini clamps. So, 
You know, that might be a good alternative. Here's another picture here that just shows you how on the original 3 8 it's obviously narrower enough to fit nicely into the mini clamp spinner. And the mini clamp spinner fits nicely into the uh, 3 8 inside diameter copper tubing. So, you know, I mean, for me, you know, I got to make it out of the copper. That's the way my dad did it, you know, and that's what the... The channel is all about you know it's my dad's legacy i trying to share his knowledge with you and how it helped me with surf fishing so uh, i'm forced into making them out of the copper but uh you know another picture here too that kind of gives you a better view of the the width and you'll see when we start using this gen 3 that that 3 8 uh inside diameter copper is sweet because you know i had a I had a couple comments that, you know, Jim, uh, in your in your video on how to use the Gen 3 and make a full Pompano rig, you tell us to pinch the mono, and uh, that way it'll go through the tubing easier, and you'll see that with the demo. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know, what can I do to make this better? And that's where I found that that inside diameter 3 8 was, was the key. And uh, so now when we go to use the Gen 3, there's no need to pinch the mono or anything. It's just going to, you just grab it with your fingers and push it through with this new design. And um, it actually uh, works better on the mini clamp compared to the old style too. So uh, we'll move on here, but, uh, you know, a little money saver for you there. We'll save you 20 bucks if you want to. Here's a cool picture here. You know, there's Dad's original jig. And, uh, you know, his jig, if you look, the dimensions are, you know, dead nuts, the same. But what we've got different is, is uh, now that we've learned about the wider copper, so he didn't have that, obviously. And he did not have dowels. He had nails. And, you know, the, the nails were okay. But, boy, I didn't like the feel of the nylon slipping off of, sanded or uh, filed uh, nail heads. Uh, I just didn't like that. I was worried about nicks. And the other thing I didn't like either is if I was uh, moving around in my uh, my work area in the dark and I happened to lean on this pegboard, well, those nails would go onto my hand quite nicely. So I thought, hey, we can make this thing safer uh, and, uh, you know, not put any nicks in the mono as well. And the other, uh, the other thing you can see that he had was those metal things on the side of his jig. They were the uh, little metal pieces that came with uh, a Venetian blind, and you would screw them into the wall and wrap your excess cord around it. And, you know, I didn't like them either. Uh, no offense, Pop, but, you know, they, they were metal too. If there was a nick, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't afford nicks in the mono. So that's why we went to the mini clamps, but... Hey, you know, as my dad said, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, I'm sure he got this idea from a friend, and uh, and I'm sure there are iterations of this uh, jig, you know, going through the decades. But but that's the deal. That's why we call it the Gen 3. We had a few modifications with the clamps and the, the dowels. So uh, that's, uh, that's a cool picture if you wanted to see the original. And uh, here's your chart again. And, you know, we, uh, you know, once we get this thing made, I know this has been a little bit long of a video. I hope you use the pause button if you have to review it a few times. But it's going to be worth it because you've got to use this thing to appreciate it. And once you use it and start making your jigs, you'll see how much easier it is than some of the other, uh, you know, boards that they make out there that are just nails sticking out of them and uh, you have to weave it with your fingers. So, you know, it's uh, it, it's going to be worth it. So hang in there, get it done, co-op it, make more. And, uh, you know, I am still making them on eBay. If you do a, a search for a Pompano rig maker or just search for Pompano brownie, you know, <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to have any trouble finding that jig. And, I can tell you uh, with great assurance that I don't make any money on these things. By the time I pay $17 for priority shipping and I, I buy uh, all the copper that I need and dowels and glue and 
you know, hardware. Uh, I'm lucky if I make four or five dollars, and then I probably burn that up in my pickup truck when I go to drop these off the post office. But it isn't about making money. It's about helping you, the fisherman, helping you to learn and helping you to be self-sufficient. There is nothing better than making your own gear. I make my own rigs. I make my own sinkers. I make my own sand spikes and um, just the way I like it. Well, that'll just about do it. I want to wrap this up. Before I do, though, I want to give you a short video demo on me using the new Gen 3. And I will be making a new video uh, called Tying Pompano Rigs with the Gen 3. The old one's uh, still out there, and it's a little dated. And when you get to that part where it tells you to pinch the mono, you know you don't have to with the new one if you're using the new hardware. But uh, anyways... Uh, Keep in mind that new video I'm going to be making called Tying Pompano Rigs with the Gen 3 will show the entire process from start to finish, adding beads and uh, snap swivels, etc. So uh, I hope this helps you. I hope you've learned something. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And that'll do it for this video.